Anton Chekhov, like Mark Twain, Bret Hart, and many of the other writers of the 19th century, started out as a journalist. And by the age of 16, he was supporting his entire family in Moscow by writing fillers and sketches for newspapers. By the time of his death, Chekhov had written nearly 800 stories, and one of the best of those stories is entitled The Bet. It's typical of Chekhov's writing and how he studied life and why it was worth living by presenting two gentlemen who foolishly toy with 15 of their most precious years. I contend that capital punishment is the more moral. Execution kills you instantly. Life imprisonment kills you by degrees. Which executioner is the more humane? The one who kills you in seconds? Or the one who draws the life out of you incessantly for years? They are both equally immoral. But if given a choice, I would certainly choose imprisonment. It's better to live somehow than not to live at all. Oh, that's a lie. I'll bet you two millions that you couldn't even stick for five years in a cell. If you're serious, then I bet I'll stay not five, but 15. 15? Well, <laughs> done. I stake my two millions. Agreed. You stake two millions, I my freedom. Uh, <laughs> come to your senses before it's too late. The two millions means nothing to me, but you stand to lose three or four of the best years of your life. And I say three or four because you'll never be able to stick it out for longer than that. We shall see. Don't forget, this will be voluntary imprisonment. The idea that you could free yourself at any moment will poison the whole of your life in the cell. I pity you. Pity? <laughs> From a banker? Why did I make this bet? What good will it do? The lawyer loses 15 years of his life. And I, I throw away two millions. Two millions. His light is always on. Does the man never sleep? He used to sleep. You still insist? A bet is a bet, my friend. <laughs> Fifteen years? Strictly solitary? Strictly obligatory? You may leave of your own free will any time you so desire. All the comforts, of course. Music, wine, books, any quantity, any time. 12 o'clock, November 14th, 1885. An excellent memory. What else have I to remember but that? The date of my freedom. Hmm. You're a brave man. And you are a rich man. <laughs> In 15 years, you could be both. So you do believe I can do this? Perhaps. Only time will be the judge. You see? No lock. The bet is the lock, my friend. Alexander said the state was not God. It had no right to take away life. I have a question for you, then. Is money God? <laughs> uh, please. Answer me that question when I come out. Fifteen years to wait for an answer? It is not an easy question. Of course, make good on this bet it will be my ruin. I have no more two millions now than I have common sense. Fifteen years. 
I ask you, what could happen in 15 years? Birth, death, war, calamity, flood. Nations rise, nations fall. Or nothing. To my prisoner, 15 years can be broken down quite simply. Year one, terrible loneliness, boredom. I heard the piano, night and day. Sad, soft music, always slow. Always on the verge of tears, it seemed. Through notes, I asked him. Wine, tobacco, do you want some? No, he wrote back. Wine excites desires. And desires are the chief foes of the prisoner. Besides, nothing is worse than to drink good wine alone. I sent him books in those years, light books, comedy, fantasy, love. In the second year, the music stopped, and the books that he asked for were classics. And then in the fifth year, the music started again, and he asked for wine. My servants, the ones who observed him, said that all he did was eat, drink, and lie on his bed, play the piano, and, uh, <laughs> and occasionally talk angrily to himself. The sixth year, all languages. He mastered uh, six of them. It took him four years. Those were the, uh, the happy years for him. And then, in the tenth year, he asked for one single book. After the 600 or so that he devoured previously, he asked for one single book. The New Testament. And he spent the whole year on it. Towards the end, you know, the last two years, really, his, uh, his reading became quite odd. Uh, natural sciences, then uh, Shakespeare. Through notes, he once asked me for um, um, a book on chemistry, and then a text on medicine, then a novel, uh, then a, a treatise on theology or philosophy it was, I, I don't remember which. He, he seemed to be reaching in all directions at once, like a, like a man drowning in a frenzy. Even the notes that he sent me, the notes themselves seemed to be confused, quite jumbled. He ate less, he drank more. I'm not sure, but uh, 15 years of being alone, not talking to a, another human being, I, I wonder. Of course, he must die. I mean, that's quite clear, even to the most ignorant. To fulfill this bet would mean my ruin, and I will not be ruined. Not by some lunatic who will spend my last penny, <laughs> enjoy life with it, gamble, play the stock exchange. <laughs> Thank you for the happiness of my life, sir. <laughs> Here, let me help you, sir. No. Disgrace? Bankruptcy? Never. I mean, it doesn't make sense, does it? You do understand, don't you? All 
I need is the courage to carry out my intention. And that is rapidly approaching. I shall kill him. conscience and before God who sees me, I declare to you that I despise freedom, life, health, and all that your books and all call the blessings of the world. Your, your books, books gave me wisdom. wisdom. All the, the thoughts, thoughts of all the centuries are compressed in a tiny lump in my skull, and I despise your books. Everything is void, frail, visionary, and delusive as a mirage. You are mad and gone the wrong way. The books told me this. They told me how you dreamers wish for things that cannot be. How you take lies for truth and ugliness for beauty. And so all of you, all of you immortal men shall die like mice and your wisdom will burn with the earth. I have only content. I do not want to understand any of you. I once dreamed of two millions in gold as paradise. Keep your paradise. It is hell. 